and welcome to Trusty Hog. Episode 34. Oh my god, do you remember the number? Shut up. I'm so proud of you. Okay, You're my thank angel. You. I do like you today. It's weird, Helen. Really? Yeah, I really like you. You know, do you ever think, I suppose one in every like 100 days, women must look across at their sort of irritant husband and think, ah, he's a gobshite, but he's my gobshite. And today I just feel that way about you. I feel that from you this morning yeah. when we were having a coffee. I felt like you were playful. I'd let you have a little leg over. Like, I really would. Do you know, like it's your birthday kind of thing, but it's not. Oh my God, everyone, welcome to episode 34. We're just going to get into it. Through the fog, step forth the trusty hogs. Yeah, you're going to give them your problems and they will solve them. Or maybe they won't. And that's your problem. They'll have guests and Andrew White on the tech. As the trusty hogs trust the trusty hogs, or maybe not. Hi, it's trusty love, hogs. What do you think it is? Is it because I've like worn a nice dress? Or? It is. I was thinking that. I was like, it's weird that during this podcast, you've increasingly dressed up more nicely and put on makeup, and I have increasingly oh, stopped washing my hair and like stopped that. wearing makeup. Oh, <laughs> it's awful. I've like stopped showering for it's this. Disgusting. What does it mean? Disgusting. What does it mean? But yeah, maybe suddenly I'm like, she is clean and gorgeous. No. I just like you. I love you. I saw you do comedy last night. You're very good at your job. It kind of gets me going. I felt like last night I had a breakdown on stage. Maybe I loved that. Maybe you were vulnerable and I loved it. I was very vulnerable. I was because I was doing that thing where I've got to relearn old material, but I wanted it to look like new material. But it automatically looked like new material because I didn't know it anymore. But then I realized that this bit of material is... Like, it's from when I was, like, so stable on my meds and I knew what I was doing with that my life. That didn't come across. Really? I felt yeah, like no. everyone thought I'd lost it. And then, because I thought... I oh, no, I meant it didn't come show, across. Then it you didn't were come filming. Ac- no, I meant it didn't come across that you had written it when stable. Wow. But I love you and I like you. Thank you. you. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Trusty Hogs. This is the podcast where we talk about, frankly, our perfect lives. I know it's crazy. I'm not washing more than once a week. And um, then we talk about your problems. We help you with those. And then we have a guest in. Who's our guest today, Helen? Abigailia. Oh, she's good. She's good. And also the only person that I can, like, wear a prom dress on stage and it feels like it makes sense. Like, if I wore it, you'd be like... Get her some more sertraline. When she wears it, it's like fun. You're like, yeah, she was cooking. What do you want? Yeah. You're like, would you want her to change? Do I want her to, want to talk about our failures this week, though. Because no, thank you. I had a big one. I feel like you always talk about my failures. Okay, but I had a really good failure. Okay, go on. <laughs> okay. Just in case anyone heard it, I am aware how my appearance live on BBC Radio Shropshire came across. Excuse me, what? <laughs> <laughs> it was just like... You know when you have... A, like, no one heard it. B, do tell I us everything. I heard it. Like, maybe I should address this. And I was like, no one's heard this. Right. So you know when you have like an interview in, but for like BBC Radio, blah, 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 usually it's pre-recorded and they just play it later in the day, yeah. right? Uh-huh. Oh, often it's live. It was live. Oh, no. No one oh, told no. me it was live. Didn't they, they say, went, hang on there, Helen, we'll get you on in a the moment? They did. And that's when I clicked. But I was already outside. I had hay fever. My throat was scratching. No. And I was like... <laughs> and Sunil was inside. And I was like, I'll be done in like five minutes. Minutes. They started and they went, anyway, we're back with Helen Barron in a minute to play a game. And the only reason they had to do that is because they were asking me about comedy and like, what's it like to be a comedian? What are heckles like? And I breathed down the wrong hole. Oh, God. And I started choking on oh my God. own fear. On oh BBC God. Radio Shropshire. How often does a gal get hey, to go on BBC Radio Shropshire? Do you know what, though? Sometimes the biggest thing, that the worst thing that can happen on live things or anything is that you're not yourself. And no one can say you weren't authentic while you choked on your own snot. I couldn't breathe. And then they were like, oh, we'll cut to a song. They cut to Happy by Pharrell Williams when I wasn't happy. And then I had to play a guessing game and I wasn't very good at it. And it was just... That sounds incredibly stressful. Yeah. But um, at least maybe now Andrew believes in hay fever. Nope, still still wow. skeptical. Wow. Right. And the, my neighbours were mowing the lawn, so it was just like grass everywhere, and I was like, Ugh. But that's, that's like a like visual a stimulant. That's like a you know like a placebo kind of thing. You have, no, uh, Andrew, <laughs> fuck off. We've even had people comment saying hay fever's real. I can't believe you're still. I have a prescription it's... antihistamine. A prescription. Anti- that's how bad mine is. Wow, you're really going to drain the NHS for a fake for a fake drain illness. Drain the NHS. I pay for my prescription. Wow. Okay. Yeah. No, I know, but it's still, drain okay. the NHS. I had it in. I, don't, I mentioned it amongst four of the things in one yeah. one appointment. Mm-hmm. I don't drain. I'm very concise. I bet you're the most efficient <laughs> doctor's appointment of all time. Yeah, I brought time. in my list. Let's go, sir. 
Do you do a list as well, Andrew, when you go in? I don't go in. For fuck's sake. You never go to the doctors? No, I went once. Well, let's not get into that. No, I've no, not. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a train on the NHS. This from a man who wants to take off his ouchy braces, even though he's got them free from the NHS. How fucking <laughs> dare you? <laughs> I am not doing this with you. Look, Helen, we have news. Is it about your ear? Oh, no, it's not about my <laughs> ear. But I did get my ear pierced. So exciting. Piercing number 10. I'm I so know. excited. It's like, what number does it become bisexual? Like, at what? Like, oh, I, I think, like, I I think, think like, <laughs> piercings is just like straight as fuck, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you add on. And then there's like, obviously, like, pure straight girl piercings. Like, a belly button piercing mm-hmm. is a cry for dick. Mm-hmm. It's not a cry for anything else. Sure. It's like, it's just down there. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. an arrow. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think the chain made it pretty bisexual. I added yeah. the chain. But I think this, yeah, I think I'm there. I mean, I have a little stack. Anyway, I'm obsessed and I love them and I loved getting it done. And every single time I'm like, it's for my Holy Communion. Um, (laughs) Every single time I'm just like, any minute now, I'll be off to the church. It's so exciting. (laughs) I get my confessions ready while I sit there. It's so exciting. Can I be your patron saint? No. Um, You have to perform miracles and I think be virginal. I just don't think it's for you. I'm virginal as fuck. Yeah, could it grow back? I suppose so. Uh, Anything can grow back. I lost my hymen not to sex. It was to a... Doesn't matter. (laughs) <laughs> we already know it was to the handle yeah, of your hair brush. To the handle brush. But I feel like I should stop saying it because people are going to like walk in while their kids are listening to this. Like, Turn it the fuck off. Oh, bless that. Where you got your piercing done? You don't seem like a Claire's girl. I am not a Claire's girl. No. no. In fact, um, I first started going there because I had my second ones were uneven, which I noticed and then it bothered me too far. Oh, everyone noticed. You kidding? I know, it's crazy. I actually am ashamed that you let me walk around like that. It's Uh, fucking harrowing. It was so much fun because everyone would be like, do you know Catherine Bohart? And I'll be like, oh, Catherine with the wonky piercing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She has OCD, but they're asymmetrical. Like, how does she cope? I breathe down the wrong hole again. Oh, it's like being back on Shropshire. How exciting. <laughs> BBC level entertainment here, lads. She's choking. It's so painful, Andrew, when you get pollen stuck in your throat. Okay. And um, so then, oh, no, don't make me not believe in it. Um, and then I got a little stack to, me- me- to make them even up. Because she, like, put another one on top. Yeah. Anyway, I go to a place called Sacred Gold, which is, frankly way out of my budget which is why I go there every three years for one more piercing and that's fine you know Claire's it costs like £9.99 but yes also but you, there you're, you're I no it's a no for me I want it to be a treat it is a treat and I, I can justify it based on cost per wear. I'm going to take you, Claire's, and I think you're going to be... I it think that's a no from on, me. It's not the same. Do you want to do it like Hallie and Annie in The Parent Trap? I don't want to do that with you, no. Um, in fact, yesterday, as I saw you, what did you do? Hugged you and pushed against your ear. And I, while I screamed, you did what? Held me I tighter. Held tighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. I didn't know you had your ear pierced. Like, I was shouting. I've had like, my ear pierced today. I thought you were into the hug because it was like I was sitting down. You were standing up. I thought it was kind of like a dom thing. I was screaming like, in pain. Do people oh. normally scream when you hug them? Is that why it didn't register? Well, Sunil makes like a, a like a panic like in the he like goes. Aah! But and also, you thought it was like a dom thing, but you didn't think my consent was relevant. I don't really understand it. I know, we've been over this. Oh my God, so much to cover. But we have news, which is not my ear piercing or your lack of What's the news? understanding of consent, which we should r- circle back to, frankly. Yeah, we should. Which is, we're doing Edinburgh. Oh my God, okay, I knew this news. Now, I, I know was, you're like, at home. Surprise for me. No, <laughs> Jesus, you are a co-host on the show. I know you're at home going, yeah, we know you're doing Edinburgh, guys. We know you all have Edinburgh shows. We've already booked tickets. Yeah, sure, that's great. Thank you But so we much. mean hogs. Hogs are doing Edinburgh. We're yeah. going to be there. We're so excited. 25th of August, 11.20pm, Monkey Barrel. And our guest that night is going to be Nish Kumar. You know Nish Kumar, famous Nish Kumar. Very excited. And also, it will be Nish's birthday during the podcast recording. I know. I'm so, so excited. highly recommend you bring along cards and gifts. Make him feel uncomfortable. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. He'd hate the attention. Please Give bring it. A Please. Real big hoggy love welcome. Um, so we're doing that on the 25th. Now... What are, what are we doing on the other Thursdays? Great question. We're still doing shows. We're doing two gigless lives in Edinburgh as yes, well. Yes, please. Are they the 11th and 18th, Andrew? Uh, they are indeed. They're also at 11.20pm. That's right. Whatever Thursday you're in Edinburgh, we got something for you. Gigless is our new material show. We're having all our friends on. And it's just going to be great. And it's all in Monkey Barrel. And they're all already on sale on the Monkey Barrel website. Uh, if you go to Monkey Barrel instead we'll of the... it on our website as well. Yeah, yeah. But if they go to the Monkey Barrel website instead of the Edinburgh website, I think it takes less of a cut. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you should always recommend that to go to through your venue, like Pleasants for you, rather oh, than the Ed Fringe website takes another percentage. The venue, what, like another like ten percent? No, 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 no. Just like another like 
0.5 or whatever. But it's still like, it all adds up. That's how they get you. That's like with the Apple fucking space on a phone when they're like, oh, it's only 99p. It but then says- everyone's paying 99p and it's a billion users. So what are they getting? A billion dollars a month. I pay 79p. And they're not paying tax. <laughs> well, I've got really into capitalism, guys. Yeah. Well, <laughs> anyway, I thought the exciting part would be less the capitalism and more the um, the, the shows time, on. The, the shows time. on, which is exciting. Yeah. yeah, something to think about, something to think about. Also, I do not thrive past 10 p.m. I go a little bit mad, so I'm excited. You to get see. worse? I get really bad. But I don't think time exists on the same par- like universe in and same plane in Edinburgh because I think you get up at like so much later and you stay up so much later. The ten like ten become p.m. sort of becomes like I don't eight p.m. That. How do you then change? No, I don't get that. It, it, I mean, the whole vibe of the city is like that because I had a show at one p.m. in 2019 and. Uh, it was so quiet going in, but coming out of my show, people were kind of starting to flood in. Having yeah, it's like the crack of dawn at yeah, one it really My is. show's at three twenty, and I'm thinking of it as like a brunch show. Yeah, Seriously. genuine, genuinely, I, I totally. So, don't that. you think in Edinburgh? No, but this this is why I panic because then I don't understand meals, and then I get to go really lost and frustrated. Oh, you just get to eat the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, but then I don't. Then whatever, whenever. What are you aiming for? Whatever, whenever. Just eat whatever, whatever van you see. There's something yeah, food from. Yeah, but I do that, and then I end up having a kebab at eleven a.m. and running into like a famous comedian. <laughs> oh, I have a question for you guys, actually. Yeah. Um, because I, I can eat any food anytime. Yeah. Like I'm quite happy for like a chips and a burger yeah. pre twelve p.m. No. Like a ten a.m. burger. That's but that's gross. the thing is, my friend Danica thinks that's awful. But I, yeah, that's, okay. That's I usually no agree with Danica me. and everything. But that's fucking mad. You can have anything whenever you want. Thank it's, you, Helen. Thank a you. Dignity to being caught eating at different times. Uh huh. Like when you're caught eating a banana on the street at 11 a.m., there's something where people like respect you so much. When you're having a kebab <laughs> and you've got garlic and herb sauce dripping down your face, people mm-hmm. worry. At 11 a.m. Yeah, like you know when you're having a cigarette outside of Domino's at 10:59, waiting for it to open. <laughs> And the whole industry <laughs> walks past and goes, what's happening? And you go, it's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> it feels bad. It feels bad. I, I love breakfast food. I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, it's do. not a, an anti-breakfast food I thing. I absolutely love... I would be so sad to miss out on my porridge or protein pancakes or eggs <laughs> or like I, had eggs this morning. I love breakfast time i like sandwiches for breakfast like making like, i can get into that like i can get into that a hotel or sort of like anyone in europe and they've got like their cheeses and their meats do you think sandwiches are veg. european yes okay <laughs> <laughs> they are they're like american and european they're okay, not australian fine. apparently australians don't eat sandwiches I heard what, that on something. What do they eat? Wraps? Or? Like apparently just like in shops, they just don't sell like prepackaged sandwiches. It's like not a thing. We don't understand them there. Oh. oh. That's anyway, what I heard. That's what I heard. Write in if you're listening from Australia and tell us, have you heard of a sandwich? It's where you put... <laughs> so you put bread... You tag us, have you heard of a sandwich? We're you push a little bit of bread, a little bit of filler. Can be anything you like. Eggs, lettuce, tuna, meat. We're talking options. And then, yeah, and then, bl- then get, this, get this, get this, get this, because I've definitely had bread with stuff on. Yes. And then you, you just put another piece of bread on, Australians. So if you're listening to this and you're confused and you're Antipodean, let us know. But if you've heard of it, but you call it something else, also let us know. Fascinating stuff. They now, don't have them. Did you just find out tuna is bad? Yes. Mercury. Oh, that's not the bit. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> that's your I issue. I thought it was and environmental. Not the environment. <laughs> no, and the environment. Oh, my God. There's like no fish left in the sea as well <laughs> no I'm not joking it's not funny it's not funny there's no fish left they're having a horrible time of it it's you really eat bad. KFC yeah but it's not fucking Kentucky fried fish is it but you like they don't treat the chickens well no they don't do they no it's I really bad range which is what they call it it means that they can run around free but it technically means they can just turn 360 on the spot that's what free Jesus range fucking means. Christ. So like you read free range and you're like, oh great, that means they're like running around, like pecking things. That's like the landlords in Edinburgh during August. <laughs> it's a bedroom if you can move 360. <laughs> um, I've got an ensuite this year. All right, brag. I just want everyone All to right, know I've brag. Got an in Edinburgh. How much are you? Oh, you know Thank what? You we don't so even get much. into it. So cheap. I booked it. Wait for this. January 2020. Okay, yeah, fair enough. You deserve your ensuite. Fair it <laughs> is. And it. And oh my god, I've got so much to tell you. Okay. I think I've got a pension. You think you've got a pension? Yep. So I went on to pension B. I'm actually alarmed because this means you have a pension before me, which is very alarming. But I'm also, I'm also alarmed because I'm like, what do you mean think? So I, I, I typed my email address into pension B, made an account. So you think you have a pension? No. And then they went, I put my you, email in. Do you want to put money towards your pension? So I put £60 on it. 
I've got a pension. <laughs> it's sixty pounds. D- uh, but have you? Are you going to be paying on an ongoing basis? Maybe. Yeah. We don't know yet. Uh, Who's we? Me and um, I've got like a pension bee lady. I think her name's Katie or something. She emails me every now and again, being like, "What's the pension?" And I'm like, "I don't know. You tell me." Um, <laughs> sorry, Ellie. Ellie. Sorry, pension bee Ellie. And now she's like, "Can you call up Nest because you might have a pension with them?" And I'm like, "I don't know. What job was that?" And she's like, "I don't know." Fascinating. <laughs> sounds like it sounds like a very bad service, actually. No, she's really nice, Ellie. Shall I check it out? Yes. Okay. Okay, I, I have 60 I've pounds. I've got 60 pounds more of a pension than you do right now. That's really upsetting. It feels so good. And I bought a sofa. And you're younger than me. And I'm a baby. I'm only four. I know you're only four. <laughs> it's crazy that you bought... Also, I was so horrified when you said you bought a sofa without conferring with me. But then... But it's your sofa. But then you bought my sofa. <laughs> I was like, it's fine. We're fine. Oh my God, what a relief. I love that you thought that you had that idea independently as well. You were like, I don't know. I just found a company online. It's uh, it's this sofa. I was like, oh, that's literally my sofa. I know where I got the idea from that sofa, not just from you, but also a guy I used to sleep with. His sister's an influencer and she got that sofa. And I was like, that nice. looks amazing. I've had that for three years i know and your sofa is really nice but i don't really with love and respect when i come to yours and i sit on your sofa there's so many rules around sofa no i haven't said a single rule that doesn't scan i'm sh- i'm believing helen ah, here. No, 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 yeah. no there are rules but i never articulate them she gives me like a tv tray table to eat that's on. not the same if as I saying a rule towards me she runs over with kitchen roll no it's in four hold on i host I give you something to put your pizza on and I give you a napkin. That I don't say a single thing about rules. So I can do whatever I want next time I come That's over. That's not what I said. I'm just saying I don't say the rules. I feel like, you know, when you go around someone's house, they've got a dog and they've got a dog blanket they put on the sofa before the dog gets on it. I feel like Catherine does that with her flat before I arrive. I do it with everyone. She puts <laughs> dog blankets up and down everywhere. She puts like plastic mats up. It's not just you, it's all people. <laughs> really? Yeah. Actually, you have trusted me more and more in your flat. Yeah. Like, now I can like help myself to things from the freezer. That's true. From the I let, freezer? Yeah, I let her get ice out, even though there's a system. Oh, ice, right. I thought she was like getting out like a frozen chicken no, or something. No, it's such an organised freezer. Like, it's really well done. But she lets me go in there and get ice, and I have to put it back. You do. And I do. That's how ice works, if and you wanted to stay as ice. It, but I don't do it because I don't do it nicely. This is like the the, the Korean show with the, the toddlers. You let them do stuff. Yeah, or like all those E4 shows about exposure therapy for people with OCD, where they're like, let's put a bull in your house, like or China shop or whatever. <laughs> A show you know when it's like we can take oh my god don't you remember the series okay so there's a bunch of shows you know the way you love the diet shows yeah okay well the equivalent for mental people is when they go hey you have ocd let's um let's wreck your gaff and then see how you cope how about now how about now or oh, then then orders shows when they sort of got no partly that yeah so they'd also just like take all their shit away when they were clearly like not re- mentally ready so there's the other one though which i think is the grossest where they'd be like They'd get compulsive cleaners and just get them into people's disgusting homes and be like, let's see what your madness does here. I it's think fucking I've seen gross. This. Is there one with a woman who's like aristocracy and an aristocrat? You've lost me. Am I saying the right thing? And she is. No, the word you like, used correctly. I'm just not sure about okay. that. And she lives in this like big castle and she's just filthy and her hair's filthy and she like gets these two people in with OCD to clean for her oh but god she doesn't want I haven't any seen chemicals that one, but... in her house she's like no chemicals nothing here so they're just trying to clean it with water and they're all no way people mind. with OCD only used water what about vinegar white wine spirits we can with lemon I will find you the clip and you will lose your I mean your mind. or whatever <laughs> <laughs> it's so good what is that sound outside I don't know it's quite ominous isn't arriving? it yeah, I, I don't know if this is going to be picked up on mic, but there's like loud, metally clanking going right outside the door, which is weird because we're like two stories up. Do you ever worry, this is this might be me being a bit mad, that like, because this room's got like no windows and we're like shut in it, that one day we're just going to open the door after doing an episode and it's going to be like apocalypse. No, but what I do like worry about... I think I'd pref- sometimes the no, way but- these episodes go, I'd prefer that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'd feel like, oh, Andrew. thank goodness, the apocalypse. <laughs> wow. He's a cunt. He's a cunt. I am indeed. I'm so sorry. I am 12. You're 12. Stop that. Stop that. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why it's so fun. I don't have the apocalypse nightmare, but I do sometimes think, don't you just think that because Andrew does all the admin, as does M, everything. I don't actually know if the podcast goes out. Are you not subscribed? (laughs) (laughs) No, like I don't listen. So I kind of have this thing in my head. I'm like, I wonder if he actually puts it out. 
I know you do because I'm subscribed. My friend Frances is a patron, so she gets the extra episodes. I also your read all the YouTube copy. Yeah, my friend's a patron. That's so cute. <laughs> I think one of, one of your friends is a patron as well. I think Georgie's a patron. Oh, what? Georgie. So. My I, that, Georgie. I'm, potentially. I, I'll have to check the name with you on the patrons Oh, we need list, to really yeah. watch what we say on the extra. My Georgie's a patron. <laughs> potentially. I'll show you the name and so you can confirm. But she has to listen to my shit all the time. And yeah, it, it's nice. We've got very, you've got very lovely, supportive friends. And Frances if you... is listening for you. She's no, she's not. <laughs> no, she's not. What are you talking about? I don't think that's right. Oh, we'll, check, we'll check in the break. That can't that's be true. Thing. We don't have the list of patrons. Andrew and Emma have them, so we don't know who's This is what I'm saying. It's like, I don't even know if it's a real podcast. Do you know, I go on YouTube and read the comments. No, I don't. Why the fuck would Does I do that? You haven't seen the latest reviews we've got. I don't want to hear anything about the reviews. Mike, by the way, can you tell I spent the weekend with my oh, friend Karen? Because I'm speaking so much more Irishly I than I usually do. So I'm Irish, like, I said gaff earlier and I was like, hold up, phone. Um, can I read you this and then can you tell me about your spa day with Karen? Because I know you met a celebrity. And yes. We, well, we, he um, certainly thought we did. You were going to literally. I don't know if I should tell. Actually, maybe the celebrity story needs to go in the extras, Andrew, because I am about to slag off. Celebrity somebody. story in the extras. Mm-hmm. Go subscribe. I'm about to slag uh, somebody to off Patreon big time. For that information. Okay, so the last review, five stars. Is this the Helen show? Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dooms. Okay, Southampton Knights. Absolutely love it. Five stars. Can we please rename this The Helen Show? She brings nonstop laughs to my day and is gorgeous. I would say it's enough to turn me straight. We also need to appreciate the fantastic Andrew. How could anyone ever ghost that beautiful, fine man? I will never know. Thank you. I think we all agree and take a minute to reflect on the greatness that is... Chloe Peck. <laughs> Absolute comedy genius. And I have enjoyed thoroughly every time she has been on. And the Irish one is on as well, giving it a go. Good on her. No, Good that doesn't t- Andrew, no, Helen, Andrew, that Chloe, word. and that other one. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Because I did a shout out when you went here to give reviews just positively me. Next one, five stars. Hilariously funny pod, genuine. Oh, no. Every, that one, that one is quite Helen, nice. Yeah. And Andrew, damn it. P.S. <laughs> Helen and Sunil should totally get together. <laughs> so these people are reviewing it like it's like, oh, thank God yeah. for Helen. Giving I, it a go. Yeah, please do leave us some reviews on on whatever podcast app you're using. No, no, Five no, star no, reviews. Helen, We're Helen, with Helen, Helen. Do you realise that like people from our industry might read those and think that I'm actually shit at my job? I had not thought about that. I can tell that. I, I, don't, I don't think TV bookers are going and looking at our podcast reviews. Fuck you, Andrew. I showed up at several TV things and I've had them be like, we listen to the Hogs podcast. If they oh go, my God, bitch, cool. you ain't cats this countdown. Like, yeah. Oh, just to be clear, I was standby. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. in a room. Bitch, are you That's trying so to ruin cool. my job for my life? I had not oh my thought goodness. about that. Can you please leave us some reviews saying that Catherine is really funny? <laughs> Fuck you. Oh, I don't you need were... your pity review. <laughs> I need you to stop slandering my good name. That's we what I need. We thought it was so funny, didn't we? We were on the same Yeah, team. it was really, really funny. We it was so funny. <laughs> and they did it. It's so funny. Well, I hope you think about the consequences of your actions. Is this the Helen Show? Yes, and it's fantastic. Well, <laughs> we, do, we do have an upcoming guest on the Helen Show, which uh, is it's, time for our wonderful guest. We're calling it the Helen Show. Oh, my well, God. Sorry. Guest coming off of the, the Helen, Helen show, show featuring Catherine Bohart. Here we go. What's, uh, do you want to introduce our guest? Please welcome to the Helen Show. I'm sorry, it's Catherine. Your best friend, it's Abigail. Are you okay, Catherine? Do I? I'm just here giving it a go, Andrew. I don't even need to talk. <laughs> Through the fog, we're on the Helen Show. <laughs> it's Helen and Helen are the trusty Helens. <laughs> the thing is, it makes no difference to the actual show. <laughs> Here's the Helen Show. It's the Helen Show. <laughs> Hey, Helen, you have a new show you're working up for Edinburgh and you're previewing it, yes? I'm previewing it all over the place. This weekend, I'll be in Brighton on the 28th and 29th of May. On the 31st of May, I'll be in London at the Bill Murray. On the 15th of June, I'll be in Berlin, Deutschland, but it will still be English language comedy. 18th of June, I'll be in Hastings and there'll be loads more of London ones popping up. 20th of July, I'm in Leicester. And for anyone who's like, oh my God, you never come north, go on my website, go on the live dates. There's loads of up north for the end of the year. Hey, Helen, where do we get the tickets? HelenBower.co.uk Can't wait! Thank you so much to our exec producers, Guy Goodman, Simon Moores, Mary Fox, Janina Bautista, and our new exec producer, Annie Tonner. Thank you, Annie. 
Thank you so much to all of our producers. Kira Leach, Richard Bicknell, Elle, Richard Bold, Sadie Cashmore, Zoe, Rachel Page, Joe Holmes, Victoria Hutchison, Emma Walton, Karen and David Bull, Anthony Conway, Tim and Dom, Sarah Jark Deacon. No, no, no. It's... Hake Deacon. The Hake is my wife's and it's a Venezuelan name. Thank you, Sarah Hake Deacon. Why would you tell me that mid the read instead because of before? Because she messaged me because I got it wrong last time. It's Catherine's turn to read it out. But Sarah you Hake Deacon. could have told me that at the she start. She says that her parents got it wrong. But, so. but why wouldn't you tell me that at the beginning? Because I like how I never got a chance to correct you and it felt really good. Sarah Harkey Deacon, Oliver Jago, Claire Owen Jones, Harold Van Dyke, David Walker, Jess and Nick, Rachel R, Neil Redmond, Kaylin Lyth, and Sarah and Molly. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Honestly, thank, thank you so, you. Yeah. so much. Oh, and news for you. At the end of the month, we're going to have the uh, video recording of Mac Festa. Yes, that'll yes. be up this um, well, um, Sunday the... I don't know the date, but the end of end of um, May Sunday. And there's, we are so aware that you've been supporting us for quite a while now. And there's a little treat coming. Watch out! Yeah. Yeah. Guys, the worst thing happened. First of all, the wonderful Abigail I just got here, and she was demanding a coffee. We were like, "Chill <laughs> out." We were like, "We'll get you a coffee." She's like, "No, no, I want it now. Make your little girl run." And we were like, "Oh my god, her name's M. Chill out." I had three million views in twenty-four hours on TikTok. I'm fucking famous now. <laughs> I love it. If I want a coffee, I will have a coffee. Dad, no, actually, Abigail asked for tap water, and then we insisted she have coffee. And then <laughs> Andrew said the weirdest thing to M, which I've never seen. He became this person you I've never insisted she go coffee. I know. No, I'm the worst. But then Andrew, did you see Andrew as M left? Yeah, I know. He handed her the card and went, buy yourself something too. <laughs> what? No, Ew, the, what are because, you, fucking pimp? Because like, when we did coffee this morning, I forgot to get M one. So I was like, That's I'm so true. sorry. We, we yeah. Really you don't have to make up for it by being gross. Anyway, M mean... goes to get coffee, obviously disoriented by Andrew behaving like some sort of creep. <laughs> and then she goes to get coffee and in the on, the on the way to Starbucks, she tripped in her white, her white cream jeans. Oh. In front of everyone at the bus station. Shut up, Helen. <laughs> And I am trying to have sympathy because maybe she hurt her butt and you're just being mean. Is your butt hurt? Are you butt hurt? Are you butt hurt? <laughs> just if, are you out all day, Em? Are you out all day? It's, yeah. Yeah, okay, so here's what, when someone goes, oh my gosh, what happened? Just look at them and go, it's the festival look. <laughs> It's, a it's festival. the festival look. Yeah, I, tell them that. That's cool. I will be tell following you around though the rest of the day, being like, she fell on her ass. <laughs> You're a dick. She slipped on metal. Abigailia, how are you? I'm good. Welcome. I'm great. I love this little setup here. Hey. It's fine. It's great. I used to be a hot yoga teacher, so I'm used to it. Oh my god, yeah. of course. Yeah. So hot- I've started hot yoga. I do it at Fierce Grace. <gasps> Which Fierce Grace are you going to? The one I near my house that I can't tell you the address oh, of because people. Do of, yeah, never mind. I, know I apologize. I apologize. No, no, that's not your yeah. fault. But Helen gives out her full address, so you would be understood. Like yeah. it's understandable that you would think I'm I could say. Hill, oh, that is so <laughs> Stop dangerous. Saying it. That Stop. Is so Stop it. Stop it. Um, no, I. My agent repeatedly has had to tell me to stop giving out my address. I, yeah, um, I have a fierce grace near me, and I go there. I do so love. Good. That's why I was asking. So once the podcast yeah. is turned off, we'll be like, which one? Just to quickly Amazing. check with people, this is Bikram yoga, right? Hot Bikram. No, 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 so, Bikram's no. bad. He's okay. a bad guy. So that's what I was certifying. <laughs> <laughs> I did Bikram yoga in like 2012 or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Very Tell in. us about your yoga very journey. And um, So Fierce Grace, just so you know, the woman who runs it, name's Michelle, I haven't met her, but she was a uh, Bikram teacher, and those all used to be Bikram studios. And before... Oh. It all came out. So for those of you who are d- don't know, no. uh, Bikram uh, is a bit bit of a sexual assaulter, bit of a bit of a touchy feely, uh, creepy, creepy oh, old man. No. Yeah, there's a documentary yeah. on Netflix about it. It's horrific. Yeah. And um, before even that came out, she switched to Fierce Grace. She created her own series, so it's a little different than the Bikram series, uh-huh. but it's uh, it's similar vibes, similar deal. Right, right, right. But I think she saw the writing on the wall, man. Yeah. I think she knew something was going to happen. It's hot yoga without the predation. Something yeah. to think about. Bit of fun. Yeah. Bit of fun. Well, but it's still the same, like stretching and the heat, yeah. and like getting like savasnaring and like feeling yeah. the body. Okay, look at you with yeah. the, lang- My the dad lingo. I went to hot yoga for a while. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. How, da- how, da- how Daddy Bauer do? It was in Flea. I can say this now because he doesn't live there anymore. 
in Fleet above like a, an upholstery shop. <laughs> and it was just him and loads of mums. Ah. Yeah. And I think he went because the doctor was like, oh, it's really good when you get older for like your knees and your back just to keep your body Dude, supple. Old and then- people are fucking crazy good at yoga. Yeah. They're so good at it. They have nothing else but to I do. I think he just felt like a creep because it was just like him and he breathes through his mouth like me. So sure. Just like, <sighs> at the back of the club. You breathe through your mouth like him even. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. yes. No, I learned from the best. Yes. But he enjoyed it. Good for Daddy Bauer. Good for Michael. But you started doing, but you do yoga in Edinburgh. You teach yoga class sometimes. I, I used did, to. I did one year, but, uh, you know, you do something <laughs> once in uh, Edinburgh and people think you do it all the time. I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. I did it one year and it was super fun. Uh, the I once broke up a relationship in Edinburgh and then, you, you know, yeah, people think now, you do it all the time. Exactly. And now <laughs> you're not. I'm I'm uh, <laughs> I hate it. Let's move on. <laughs> but, uh, so I started practicing when I moved to New York at 18. Uh, I went to school for musical theater. And uh, what? I can't believe it. Oh my god! But you have blue hair. I know. Go on. What do you mean? <laughs> Which school for musical theater? The American Musical and Dramatic Academy. I love There's you so much. Amda. Years. Yeah, Amda. Nice. Oh my god. I'm very good. I just made up the acronym. I can oh, see. I can see an acronym because when that's I. That's what everyone calls it. That's why I was like, oh my god. Yeah. Rada. Um, it is in a building literally I just behind can't. Alvin Ailey, Juilliard, and uh, the Fame School. It is like oh, a wow. dilapidated building behind the greatest <laughs> schools in the country. The Fame School's <laughs> real? Yeah, the Fame School's real. It's called LaGuar- LaGuardia School of the Arts. Um, I've heard of that. Does it also yeah. have like a high school? Att- yeah, so that is the Fame School. The Fame School is a high school that is a performing arts high school. Oh, Juilliard's a university. Gosh. Alvin Ailey is a contemporary dance school. And they're some of the greatest schools in the country. But in the we shed behind. behind them. Yeah, we are behind <laughs> them. And, uh, Stay humble, babe. Yeah. Stay humble. Yeah, right by a project that we were told never to walk through. Uh, wow. What project? Yeah. What am I not understanding? Have you been yeah. in the world? So projects are um, like uh, social oh. housing in... Uh, Estates. In, in, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Sorry, like I didn't a, know that. The projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In America, you call them. Yeah, like favela. I don't know if in we're Brazil. allowed to call them the projects anymore. I haven't lived there in a while. So oh, it might be under yesterday anymore. I was in uh, Sweaty Betty... And um, I was with a friend who likes to shop and I actually went into a live shop. Imagine. Um, I don't think I've done it in the last two years. <laughs> and uh, and this American woman beside me in the queue is like giving her email address. And in the middle of her email address was a full stop. And she just kept saying, so like, I, I don't remember her name, but it was like Claire period <sighs> name. Right. I love saying and, period. And so the woman was like, uh, and she's like, no, 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 don't spell it. And it's not like word period. It's a period. And the the teller was like 18 and she was like, I don't, I, look at me Americanizing the teller. Um, and she was like, oh, I don't even think that's right. But she was like, she just was so, so confused. And eventually I had to step in and be like, uh, uh, just just a full stop. And the American one, woman turned around to me and was like, I don't need you to translate. And I was like, <laughs> bitch, you do. Oh my God. You do. But yeah. also that wasn't about Americans. That was about this horrible woman. At yeah. Sweaty and Bay. that poor cashier's just putting the blood emoji. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right at yeah. Her. She doesn't know what to do. She's like, I don't. I don't cramping wait face, cramping face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, that was not a good story to interrupt you with. Back to your education in the shed. Yeah, so uh, I went to school for musical theater, and while walking to school every day, I passed a Bikram studio. So I started to practice there in the way I afforded it, because hot yoga is very expensive. Yeah. Uh, people like to remind me. I'm like, I know. Um, pass, pass, baby. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you could work at the yoga studio once a week in exchange for a free class. <gasps> oh, great. That's so cool. So I did that all through college, and then when I uh, left with my musical theater degree, I immediately <laughs> went and got certified as a yoga instructor because you need a day job, baby. Yeah. And I taught all through living in New York. And then when I moved over here, I taught at some yoga studios. But like yoga, much like comedy, you got to be in with the really? booker. Really? Yeah. So like I showed up. And, really? Yeah. And there was a studio that was like uh, wanted to hire me. And uh, they were like, could you teach like the 7 a.m. class? And I'm like, I'm past that right now. I don't get the shit gigs anymore. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm a high Give paid. me 10 a.m. Yeah. yeah. I, I was like, I can teach at 10, 12, and 4.30. And those are the only times. And she's like, well, that's when our most senior teachers want to teach. And I was like, I know. I'm not doing any other. That's me. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is they fostered these other teachers and they've been there for years. So I come in as like the new guy. And I'm the new guy again, yeah. so I'd have to take the shit shifts. So what? And I didn't want to do that. I feel like I know about this from Broad City. You know, Abby wants to be a personal trainer, but she has to work as a cleaner for years before she's allowed to train Shania Twain. 
Wait, Does that's else get this reference? Yeah, no, I get, <laughs> the, I get the reference. I was trying to see if it's the same as what Abigail said, and then I realized. I mean, I did talking. fold a then lot I of remember towels them. and yeah, clean a lot of mirrors. Yeah. That's so cool. I don't want to go to the same fierce grace as you. Why would I want to be by the person who's the best in class? I'm not anymore because I don't practice regularly. Uh, okay, but I still think you're better than me. Uh, well, probably. Why? You're yeah. <laughs> You're yeah, so I have a, I w- you find unwinding so natural. <laughs> You're so chill. But that's what hot yoga is best for, like type I know, A it's re- personality. No, it really like, is because it's so hot and the teachers just talking the whole time. You yeah, can't, you can't focus on anything else. I'm so unused to being that warm that it yeah. really takes the focus. And also, it does actually sort of like lube you up a bit because you're like more stretchy because yeah. of the heat um uh, that you can't really like, oh, you can I at least do come more with you i've only done please like come time i'd love you to come i would That'll love you to so come fun. also i feel like fierce grace is better for like a like i feel like i'm often the worst person in the class but i feel included in the class yeah which i think is good yeah, and Fierce Grace. I feel like now this I mean, if you've only gone three times, it's a good place I know, to go. I feel like you want me to go, though, because you know I'll be worse. But right? they have, oh, like, no, 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 that's not what I meant. I just mean, like, I actually feel like we don't feel like thumbs at the back. The, well, the thing I like about yoga, because I was never, like, a sporty kid, is, like, it's you on your mat doing your own thing. Right, you're so, not letting anyone else down. Exactly. So if you want to sit down the whole time, if you don't want to do a posture or, you know... Whatever. I want to beat not... the elderly woman who lives near me who's fucking incredible. Oh, every oh yoga class is an older woman. Why are they so good? Band. She's like that. She's probably she's got a... nothing else. And she's probably a former dancer. When I was teaching <gasps> on the Upper West Side. Cheat. Cheat. Oh, my Cheat. God. This is, uh, I, I mean, I definitely had food issues and body dysmorphia before becoming a yoga instructor. What up? <laughs> Hello. Join the gang. We love to see you. Come on, oh, but being a yoga instructor, like I'll, I, I'll, I'll send you the pictures if you want of me when I thought I was fat and unflexible, like doing a back bend and Do grabbing my heels. Yeah. And I was like, so I thought my body was so awful. Now I look at it and I'm like, that was the most amazing thing ever. Yeah. But my students were like, the Rockettes, the prima ballerina what? for the American. Ball- Jonathan Groff used to be my yoga. Shut student. your oh, whore oh, mouth. Ha! What I are you talking about? Really losing your mind. Mine? As yeah. soon as it came up, I was like, they're gonna freak the fuck out. Oh, that is crazy. I mean, he, he's also an ama- yeah, amazing Broadway yes, actor. Yes, Glee! And one thing I'll have to say about uh, Jonathan Groff, Groff, excuse me, a uh, beautiful yoga practice. Absolutely. Really? I see that for him. I see that Johnny. for him. I'm just Wait, really so, like sorry, hang on. Right now. I just, I just picked up, you, you said he was the reindeer from Frozen. Yes. No, he, he was, he was, um, uh, what's it? Not hands. The other one. Sven. Sven. No, the not Sven. He wasn't the reindeer. He didn't play the reindeer. Yes, he the re- does. He does both voices. Oh, does he do both voices? <laughs> oh yeah, he does. He does both voices. He does do both I wouldn't voices. put that as his lead role, though. Him pretending to oh, do a reindeer voice. <laughs> that's when he was my student. Whoa, was that's he so cool. From Frozen, yeah. that is amazing. He's, wow. he's a really nice guy. That's so cool. Really nice wow. is. You know, Leah Michelle's going to be a surrogate. Wow. She offered, <gasps> according to Twitter. That's I... the least she could do. She that's makes... the least she could do. That is a PR move that is like but just about balancing the scales. Yeah. I was going to say, cool. she makes me uncomfortable because there's so yeah. much bad information out there about her. But right. at yeah. the same time, she's like Jonathan's best friend. So I'm like, there must be something. Unless maybe, oh, is he Maybe he's also life? a maybe. racist? But, but no, but you she... told Allegedly. Yo- you yeah, know like, I, you don't asshole. know. Lovely man. Man, lovely man. To you, a white lady. To me, a white lady. To me, Adina Menzel. Uh, I never met her, but she did practice at the studio. Hell, uh, my God. Chris Noth. Went there. Oh, the worst. Chris Noth is bad. I know. I, I, as soon as I said it, I was like, oh, yeah, we canceled him. Yeah. Uh, I will say the worst thing I have ever done in my yoga career is I got a message from, we all got an email being like, uh, there's an emergency, pr- like a private class that needs to be taught today. Is anyone available? And I looked I'm at sorry, it. I'm sorry, there's an emergency yoga class. This girl I is tight. A back problem. She's tight. Hamstrings be tight. <laughs> and I, I looked at it and I was already teaching like two classes that day. And I was like, fuck it. I don't want to do it. It was for Beyonce. <gasps> Beyonce, uh, Lady Gaga. I never sorry. taught Lady Gaga, but sorry. Lady Gaga went to that studio. Sorry, just to circle back. So there I am, 23-year-old chubby girl, like around the stars of Broadway, being like, sorry, just need to my circle. body sucks. I didn't meet her. I need to be. Sorry, just to circle back. You said no. I didn't know it was Beyonce. 
No one knew it was Beyonce. It was an emergency. And now I know emergency means celebrity. But I didn't know that at the time. I thought it was just. I guess it meant celebrity. It was a celebrity. It was Beyonce. You've really upset it her. It might have been the entire lie, Destiny's Child. It <gasps> might have been all of them. Not the fuck. It, was, it was so long ago, I don't quite Wait, remember. When they were a five or a three? When they were the three of them. <gasps> Their bodies were too bootylicious for you. And I didn't I didn't go. And you weren't ready for it. I, I wasn't ready for that jelly. Fellas, thank you for the help. The club is full of bottles and the fucking for the night. Can you handle uh, this? I can't even, I'm really it's upset for you. 11.30 and the club is jumping. Then again, I kind of get it because I used to work in catering at the National Theatre. Yeah. Serving coffee to people. And we had coffee? A, lot, a coffee. And we had a lot of famous people come through. My friend served Liza Minnelli a coffee. <gasps> oh my it God. Oh. What? What? She was coked up past I was like, did she know what was happening? She knew what she was doing vaguely. Can I just tell you? I want a side dame, Liza. Here's here's your coffee. And I'm a huge fan. And she went, oh, thank you, darling. (laughs) Can I just tell you that earlier on in the show, I primed the audience for a celebrity story I was about to tell in the extras. I met Rylan Clark's PT. (laughs) (laughs) Don't fucking bother. Don't bother. Oh, no, please do support us on the extras. Thank you. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. Oh, my I mean, God. I mean, you, you, you could have met. I could have met. So this was a misconnection. Yeah, but you the, will have touched the ground where she sweat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Licked it but right after. But Beyonce doesn't sweat. She shines. You're so right. They would have been fucking glowing all over that oh, room. Oh, God. What an my idiot. God. What a life, though. You've lived. I, well, you know, it's funny because you never think about that. And then I tell a story and everyone's like, are you fucking kidding? That's like, insane. Always, Americans have always lived. It's always fascinating because you're from the Midwest. I'm I know this because I love your cooking channel. Thank you. Thank like, you. Yeah, I stopped it because I was tired of it. But, but thank my you. heart is in the Midwest, I feel. You, you, well, you know, I'm from Germanic. Uh, descent as well. Right? You are. We Double. are. We are women who can carry hogs and hail. Hay, hay. You know. Yeah, 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 like yeah. Bales of hay, hails. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. But Love I just it, think, you know. like, so from what I understand from the Midwest, and I do understand it quite well because I've watched Teen Mum OG and Teen Mum Two. Okay. So have I. Then I guess I do too. Go so on. Amber and Caitlin. Oh, okay. That's I'm there. It. I'm with you. That's I'm the there. Whole vibe. Like everyone's got like an uncle and brother in jail. If not, they join the army and then go to jail, and then they all like <gasps> overeat loads of stuff, and everyone has to work as a waitress. Right? See? Boom! Okay. And then you have to have a kid. Not as funny a story as I was hoping. It seems quite <laughs> no, sad, but actually. But this is where I think I belong. There's always drama going on. Everyone's always angry at each other. And I think I would thrive in that environment. Oh. It's uh, And the I barbecue mean, sauce? Oh, I and laugh. Christians. But, <laughs> there's Christians everywhere. Yeah. Oh, this is like, okay, so this is like the cutest story from people I grew up with. So when Trump was like leaving office and something, I'm no longer on Facebook. He's but gone. He's yay. gone. Yay. But I put something out there and someone I went to school with like commented back. And I know she still lives in the area. And where I grew up is a huge Trump area now. Mm-hmm. And I and she, I kind of messaged her something. And then she was like, well, I don't watch mainstream media, which made my hackles go up. Because I'm like, I know what you're listening to. Yeah. And she comes on my DMs and we're talking about it. And this was before the insurrection. And she was Wait, like. Wait, what's the insurrection? Okay. When, so there you... was a moment. Have in you? January 6th when a bunch of MAGA people stormed yes, the Capitol. I didn't know the word for Oh, okay, it. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I was like, yeah. baby G. <laughs> No, they started with their fucking flags yeah, and they went yeah, mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Insurrection. And, and learning. Yeah. And she was like... It basically means like a rising up against the yeah. legitimate government. Yeah. Or sometimes I- illegitimate government. Yeah. Yeah. In this case, legitimate. Okay? Yep. It was legitimate. And uh, she was like, I don't know. Everyone's still flying Trump flags around here and I find it really scary and I'm afraid they say there's going to be a civil war and they're going to break out the war and I was like listen girl there's not going to be a war they're going to march they're going to complain they're going to do what us lefties did and she's like I don't know just living here it's so stressful so I just don't watch the news anymore I just listen to Christian radio to calm myself down oh. how cute is that oh and I love the idea of Christian radio do they just play like he's got the whole world in his hands on repeat oh have, do you not know about Christian Christian rock? No. Oh. I mean, I've heard of it, but I don't. Wait, that's uh. like Metallica, but instead of like but for death, it's sort of like God. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so. like, it's sort of like. Ska, uh, metal. What? Ska? There, when I was a kid, there was a, a band called Jars of Clay. Very big. Jars of Clay! <laughs> so 
sometimes they take uh, sometimes they take the old standards and like fucking rock them up, and sometimes they like make their own work. But they go songs. to churches. That's like their like yeah, tour. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or they go to like big arenas and like the Christians pack in. Yeah. See, I would fucking thrive in that environment. Yeah, you would thrive in any cult. Because I'm from like the UK Bible Belt. We've got like a tiny one. I didn't like, know you had. Yeah, one. northeast Hampshire, and like more than fifty percent of the population is like religious and goes to really? church. Sorry, actively. more than fifty percent is your Bible to- Belt. <laughs> I never said we were Irish. <laughs> but I think I do very well amongst the Christians. I think you would. I think you would. Oh my God. <laughs> you got a face for it, too. She's so upset. I just, I wish that Ireland, like you could say the parts of it that were most religious were just over 50%. <laughs> that's just like, whoa, that's crazy to me. Their Christians are different to your Christians. That's Their Christians crazy. do potlucks where they all show up with like a big thing yeah. of cornbread. Yeah, yeah, we do that when people die. We just eat beside them, the body. No, but they do it every Sunday. Yeah. I'm sorry to point at you yeah, like this. No. Like, yeah, but no, people say right, for yeah. teas and coffees after. It's not the same. You're right. It's not the same. But we do. We have the same sort of like. What sort of church mm. in Ireland do you get a hot dog at? We don't get. Dr- They've got projector screens. Yeah, we we didn't <laughs> yeah. have a projector screen at my. We have my projector church, screens. But yeah. Well, uh, the thing is though is like, which I didn't realize till I came over here, and don't want to brag. Have gone to some funerals. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> the drinking. Over because I've been to some Irish funerals. I've been to yeah. Some of the, tra- the dr- we do not do that in the Midwest. Oh no 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 no! no. It's a very there's somber a time. There's a potluck, maybe a few drinks, but there's no just going to the pub and getting skunked. In oh, that. we got high at my god uh, funeral. Yeah, <laughs> no no no. That's Rolling you need up. to get the kind of drunk where you can where where the the old man can cry. Yeah, where the women can say that he was actually a creep. Where the kids <laughs> can understand that they just have to take care of each other because ultimately that's what grief is. You just know that there's a reason now. You need to get to a place where everyone can forget why they were there in the first place. Oh, the goals are high. What's the goals are high. The funeral then? I mean, you know, you go to the church and, and God's there. And, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh-huh. And uh, so one thing that you guys do is you guys have like special people carry down the... Pool bearers. The pall bearers. We just have the closest friends and family be the pall bearers. Yeah, that oh, we do that in Ireland. Okay. We do that in Ireland. Like it does, but uh, so so everyone really that's that an English thing. You don't have different. We do sometimes, but like I mean, like the people in my family are too big. So oh, we choose we choose like based on clothes, them. but then also you have to consider height. Well, see, ours are now like on, so it'll be on a on a wheelie stand like this big. Will yeah. the casket be? Yeah. So you're not actually carrying it; you're just kind of holding the casket. That's what we just did for my uh, mum's cousin. Yeah, yeah wheeling, wheeling it down. Yeah. Oh no, 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 cheating! In Ireland, don't you just have a horse dragging it along? No, that depends on what kind of funeral you're talking about. But no, oh, okay. No. I think I'm, I've seen horses there. Sure, a very specific documentary about a specific group of people. Like big fat gypsy funeral, I think it was. Oh, we absolutely won't be saying that, that word. <laughs> and they weren't Irish, were they not? Oh, were they? They had accents. Okay, <laughs> um, we carry the funeral. We carry the the coffin in usually. Okay, maybe I don't want to go to a Midwest funeral, but I want to go to a Midwest just general Sunday. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you'd love you'd love a potluck. You you love it. I think I do tater well tots, there. Tater tots on a casserole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Our on cheese. a casserole. Okay, so our casseroles are a little different. Talk than to your, me. Your stop casserole. saying yours because I said no. You don't have to stop saying. It. I'm so sorry. That was me. That was my hackles up. I'm so sorry. What I should have said. I'm glad that was actually. I'm so sorry. Oh my god. No, that was really. I was really rude to the guest. I was really rude to the guest. I overreacted. Different countries. I just want to be clear. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, ah, I don't really think it's the same for Helen and I because we're different. Exactly. But I'm American, so so you're not. Uh, (laughs) You do realize that America doesn't understand the difference between English and Irish. Well, let's start in the first place. We have more in common. For example, we put potatoes on our casserole. None of this like bread scones. Okay. So do you guys like do a casserole where it's more of a stew? Yeah. Yeah, so we don't do that. What we do is a nice starch, like a like a pasta oh, or yeah. a rice, and you mix in a, like a tuna bake. Yeah, like a tuna bake. That's oh, a casserole. That's a casserole. Interesting. In so like you might make a, a burger casserole where it's like rice and burger, what? What? and then you put some cheese on top of it and tater tots. Helen's as drooling. The <laughs> I was going to make it for the cooking show before I quit doing the cooking show. Why did you quit before doing it? It was so fucking annoying to do. It took me all day long to do it. And I did hire an editor uh, to edit it for me. And it was absolutely fabulous. And coming to the top of this year, I had all of these ideas to make it like bigger and better. But I wasn't getting traction. So it wasn't like every 
this is so sad to talk about, but every post got less and less and less and less oh, views. Yeah. Yeah. And it was one of those where I was paying someone already yeah, yeah, to yeah. do it. And if I was going to make it better, I needed to invest more money and time into it. And I was like, well, at what point? Creativity is a gamble and you're constantly yeah. rolling do you dices. Have guests? To make the well, that's, and I'll come on it. That's what I want to do. TikTok, so I'll bring nothing to the I wanted, I wanted to do, well, the, the uh, cooking show, which is still available. I made 26 episodes. It was called Just Like Mom Made on YouTube. It's great. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's all like Midwestern and Southern style cooking. And the goal was to have guests on yeah. this season and bring in an actual camera guy because yeah. I just film it on my phone. Mm-hmm. Wow. Stagnant. And it looked amazing. Thank you. And uh, my boyfriend is actually a filmmaker and will not help whatsoever with it. Was just like, absolutely, <laughs> I do not want to film. But would he have uh, been working for free? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of get it. Yeah, I, I mean, I was, get it. I, boundaries, man. Boundaries yeah. are important. I mean, know? it's fucking rude when you desperately want it and you need it. Does he eat the food? Then, why not yeah, of course he does. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> I would be like, you don't get any of the food then but no he ate the food but Piece he's such shit. a he's such a specific eater that sometimes he would i'd make something and he'd really like it and other times he'd be like that's too rich for me like i made this chocolate cake it's the most beautiful thing i've ever made I if you see cake. one what? the flourless macadamia nut chocolate cake uh it's, why are you here like making us hungry flourless almond chocolate cake mm. and it is it's rich but it's like the whole thing is like a fondant why are you making it's us insane. so hungry it's uh, it's the best thing i've ever made oh my God. with a uh uh, rum creme anglaise and oh my god he didn't like it it was too rich so I ate the whole thing well, myself fuck, fuck that bit, guy okay? you should leave him I should I should that's definitely. crazy if we didn't both desperately need each other I oh, okay yeah I do him. love cooking shows my favorite one was cooking with Coolio <laughs> he had a cooking <laughs> show signed after he recorded like a couple of songs and he did a cooking with Coolio series no I didn't yes. know he did that cooking with Coolio what? check it out that and also um, the old <laughs> BNP which is like the big racist party in the UK or was the big racist party leader called Nick Griffin no when the BNP started going no. wrong no he did a cooking show of him cooking British classic <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking mad so what kind of gave me the idea for it, it was my boyfriend used to work for Sony Music, yeah, and he would do some of their like BTS reality stuff with their stars. That's why he knows he doesn't want to do this. So they did a come dine with me with the Little Mix girls. Oh my and god! So, oh my god! So I mean, I'm not gonna give you any. This tea. is a shout out to my ex. <laughs> I can't. Ha- so he met so, them. He knows them. Yeah, he knows them. Jade has complimented his shoes. The bitch. I think she likes my boyfriend. Jade is the best. Jade's the best yeah, one. Oh, she wants my boyfriend. She She's wants the best boyfriend. one. She's the best one. I've never met her. We have beef. She's she the best one. She's so cool. Well, this is the thing. So they did this come dine with me thing. And by the way, this is when I've Jesse. I've seen this. This is when Jesse was still yes! there. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Jesse episode is hysterical because she can't cook. Amazing. And um, But one time, Tom came home from work. He's like, have you ever thought about making doll? And I was like, because I do like to cook. And I was like, no, I'm, never, I'm not sure I can make it. And I no. made him some doll. And he was like, yeah, it's pretty good. And I was like, what made you want doll? And he's like, well, you know, Jade made it. And it was really nice. And I'm like, I am competing. Come with on. Because they made all Come this food. On. And the, the crew got to eat some How of are it. you supposed to compete with Jade Thurwell? That's insane. So he's eaten there. He's been to their houses. You're being played, babe. He's eaten there. Food. Oh my god, he set you up. You can't win that game. Yeah, yeah. Wow, well, now that we've heard all about your incredibly extravagant life in a way that I didn't anticipate, I've quite never old. met them. He I will not give like... me tickets. He no longer works for Sony Music. I feel like, like I'm reading some sort of like if celebrity. He's close with Jade, he can get tickets now. Oh, yeah. oh once, once these are off, let out. I got some stories. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> Are you ready for a problem? Yeah. Really fun vibe. We're going to get into your dream and the extras, I feel like. you had. A, you, I think you went through a lot last night while you were sleeping. Like something's going on. Do you know what oh I mean? Oh, boy. Do you not feel it? Okay, well, we can discuss This is it just my personality. Problem. Helen's always like, What's, why are you so tense today? And I'm like, it's every day. This is my life. <laughs> As my therapist said, you're living very much here. And you need to find yourself in like the general area. Helen, I went oh. all the way down there. The doctor told me that my pelvis is too uptight for me to wee. Wow. I'm having Should a tough s- time. Should we just solve your problem? I, I don't Andrew's think we have the space. He doesn't like but... taking the advice either. Uh, I think, like, relax, baby. Uh, and I don't like you touching me. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. Ready. Hello. Let's do this. Yes. I hope it's about something zen. Uh, this is from N. 
Hi, Anne. Hi, Anne. Hello, um, Anne. Anne says, it's coming up to my A-levels, which means I'm going on study leave soon. The problem is that I have I'm a... sorry, qu in question, uh, what is study 17. leave? So, oh, like a break before, like to study. Yeah, so you, how long do you get? Classes. Um, Usually two weeks. Yeah, like yeah. Okay, thank you. Basically, you stop doing classes and you're just focusing on exams and revision. Sure thing. <laughs> no, Got you. No, okay. no yeah, well, you're, you're pissing about. and yeah. going. Oh, I went to Thought Park in my study leave. Are you fucking kidding? kidding? I would yeah. definitely have been studying. In fact, I was when our, we did our equivalent. Okay. Wait. I actually, <laughs> earlier on that year, made a petition to get us out of compulsory PE because I didn't feel like you should have to do it when you had study subjects. Um, but nobody else joined me in the library for my protest. Nonetheless, I didn't have to go back to PE. Go on. Okay. Um, let me just quickly turn this camera around. As well, to, to, well uh, yeah, alternative. Sorry for this. Ooh, uh, yeah, very uh, a different look. If you're watching on YouTube, the the main camera is just over here. Very so carpool so karaoke. We switched to this. You uh, are very tan. Thin run. Yeah. Um, so the the problem is uh, that uh, I have a crush on this girl. This is N again. Um, I, in my friendship group. Do we know if N is a N is a girl. Okay. Uh, I have done for the past year. I don't know how to tell her, but I really want to. The thing is with us going on study leave, it only gives us a few weeks for me to tell her. After that point, school's finished and I've probably missed my chance telling her. I think she might be gay, but I'm not completely sure. I feel like there's also a possibility that she likes me too, but maybe I'm reading things wrong. I'm stuck in this dilemma of whether to tell her or whether that would be a distraction from my A-levels. Or if I do tell her I like her, how should I tell her? Uh, for background information, I'm not out to that many people, so she might not even know that I'm gay. Um, yes. I've, I've got the answer. I have the okay. answer too. I've, I've got the answer. answer. <laughs> that I've right. I've well, never had a guest oh, who's so good. Oh, this is, is, buzzing, this is like a nice, uh, this is a nice easy one because like we talked about before recording, some of your questions are freaking intense. Yeah, they are pretty <laughs> intense. They're this, pretty intense. This we can deal with. Um, here's what I, girl with here's what crush, I would say is, person with a crush what I would say is we should all have a go. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to rush. You can take give the answer, Helen, and then you'll absolutely get a turn. Andrew, are you ready? No, when Helen's talking, that you will get a go because okay. otherwise you don't. You feel okay. anxious the I whole time. It. I got it. Hi. Hi. Um, okay. No stress. Um, have you seen the film Booksmart? If you haven't, <laughs> watch it. Exactly the same situation. <laughs> she fancies this girl. She doesn't know if the girl fancies her. She's not out to many people. She doesn't know if this girl's definitely gay. Her best friend. It's not exactly the same situation. Amy Feldstein is like. You gotta go for it. It's not exactly the same they go situation. To a health party, they jump in the pool at the same time. She sees her making out with someone else. She's devastated for a moment, and then she gets off with another girl in the bathroom. It's not exactly the same situation. That's what's gonna happen? They, so don't, have, they don't have. They don't have. They don't have exams. And secondly, that is a terrible scenario because she vomits on her. Yeah. Yes. So basically, Helen, your suggestion is do nothing <laughs> until you the watch movie. your the crush. Movie. Yeah, you're going to watch your crush get off with someone else. <laughs> in a pool. And then just make out with a drunk girl in the bathroom until you throw up on yeah, her. Because yeah. life's not perfect and you've got to roll with the punches. Wow. Okay, that's one option. Okay. Abigail? It is the option. Okay. First of all, this like... Uh, school's almost over and then I'll never see her again. What do I do? Uh, first of all, it doesn't matter that school's over. We all have the internet. We all can uh, chat with people at 27 different ways. So you can always see this person again. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about that. Secondly, if you're worried about it distracting you from your studies, it's already distracting you, babe, because you rode into trusty hogs <laughs> instead of studying. So... <laughs> And you will not be defined by a letter on a piece so, of paper. Live your life. Exactly. Exactly. I, and so my suggestion is to tell her, be, and, and what you have to emotionally prepare yourself for either they're going to be into it or they're not going to be into it. But you have to emotionally prepare yeah. yourself for either direction. And then once it's out there, it's done. And then you can focus on your studies or you can just get some sweet loving on those two weeks. However it plays out. Yeah, definitely do not listen to Dido around this time because she is not very good at letting go of love. Like, you will not go down with this ship. You are not in love and you will not always will be. I disagree completely. Oh, I thought that was really nice. It was I, sort of like, go for it, but be prepared. Yeah. Fascinating. I disagree completely. I think um, here's uh, several things. I don't think she's ever been no, that's not what I was going to say, Helen. What I was going to say is, here are the outcomes. She says she's into it. It distracts you from your studies because you ultimately are hooking up instead of focusing on studying. B, she says no, in which case it's devastating and awkward at your exam. So you can't even focus on getting the information that you know on the paper because you're now distracted by this horrible awkwardness and you maybe even feel down and that's hideous, right? What you, if, you, if you leave it till afterwards, 
and focus. You know, you give yourself permission. I'm definitely going to tell her at the end of the exams. If she's back, if she reciprocates, you can see each other again. If she doesn't reciprocate, you'll never have to see her again. But let's be clear. You're 17. Even if this goes swimmingly, almost certainly won't be the person for you forever. In which case, if you fuck your studies, something that does stick with you for considerably more time than is likely this girl will, then you're going to regret it. So I think literally take it, put it in a box. Talk to her afterwards. Enjoy your summer with her if that goes your way, and I hope it does. But in the meantime, you have worked for years and probably need your A-level results to go well for things like university or future job prospects. And then then you can tell her afterwards. Oh, my God. Who I, the fuck is able to fancy someone that much and hold, put a pin in it to focus on their exam I feel to like, then ask them out? Who I, can do that? I feel like what we just figured out here is who actually studied for exams and who just <laughs> fucking winged it. 100%. But also, also, I would say, I think that's the kindest thing you can do for her, too. Because if... Oh, you put her in a position. If you oh, put her in a position, I never think about the other person. Neither do I. Neither do I. I, I. Like, I gotta tell them everything. <laughs> yeah. Because if you put her in a position where she has to reject you and then feel bad about that, guilty about that, remorseful about that, awkward about that during exams, is not very fair so to it's her. It's just A levels. It's not the science. You know, <laughs> chill out. And also, I think that if you, even if like, she's just confused, you've you've actively distracted her. And if you really care better as much as you do, I think that you would let both of you prioritize your exams and then tell her afterwards. No, it's love. Love comes first. You've got to say you love her. You see don't. What happens, you and then don't go to know if it's love when they haven't. Like Amy from the film for a year. <laughs> That's what you got to do. You got to throw yourself out there. And if you end up just working in a shit job for the rest of your life because you fucked it all up, then that'll be fine. <laughs> I don't see what the problem is with that. You'll be fine. I think she'll know. Out of (laughs) kindness to herself and you, prioritise what has to be done now, now, and then have the best summer ever if she's up for it. God, again. that's so responsible, Catherine. Also, that's when going so... into your exams, definitely take stuff like notes inside of a water bottle with you as well. Just no, Helen. And nothing. in the water no. bottle, a little vodka to calm yeah. your nerves. No, and if Jesus. you have those Jesus. thoughts, beforehand. you have to just deal with them in your head because one boy I went to school with at the end of a maths exam sang out loud 0800 00 1066 and he got disqualified. No, oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Hey, hey and... Time. <laughs> N, N, if you're finding this all difficult, talk to your parents and friends. If you're having a stressful time, ask people to quiz you. Use little notepads and little note um, cards. They're really good for learning things. Do not cheat. Do not deal with oh, your worries you alone. The exam because you always finish early, right? Yeah. No, to don't chop your answers. Play racy invigilators because they usually go over seventy, and you have to wait for two to be at the end of the same row, and then you got to race them down to the end. <laughs> That's great. Absolutely not. Invigilator racing. Stay in there for as long as possible. Give yourself the br- the bandwidth for your brain to think of things that you didn't even realize you knew at the start. And also, take a breath, read the questions thrice, and and best of luck. Wait, I never got told this three times. Yeah. Oh, this is really good advice. Listen, Underline I, the important words in the I, question. I'm going to be honest. I thought I gave a really sound advice, but I think <laughs> I think Catherine is, is, is thinking more of the future, and I'm thinking of the now and how you feel right now, and it would be too distracting. Yeah, advice. it'd be too distracting to keep it in. So you're you're thinking of everyone involved, but yes, Helen and I are just thinking of N, and uh, yeah, give yourself permission. You say you're absolutely going to tell her, so that you know what's going to happen. You're not humming and hawing anymore. You've made the decision. You're not humming and hawing about whether or not like it's worth it. You've made that decision too. You know when it's going to happen, and just focus on. Sorry, your just exam. one last idea. Merge the two together. No. Ah! <laughs> Okay, no. let's say you're no. doing an art A level. No. Draw a picture of them. Oh, no. Like or with the, how about mm-hmm. how about you two scissoring mm-hmm. as your final art piece mm-hmm. at the end of the exam? Hold it up, just staring at her. That's or, beautiful. Exam done, and you've asked them out. We mustn't engage our worst. Or if you've ever seen Ten Things I Hate About You, uh, you get the marching band involved. Get them out it's on England. the pitch. They don't have a marching band or a pitch. You can hire you it. You never know. It could be an international school. Yeah, yeah. listen. Then they don't have enough students for a marching band. Uh, I, don't, uh, do, I don't know. Do you guys have some sort of music class? It could just be the orchestra. Wind band. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <And> orchestra. <laughs> yeah. I am. Um, no, I'm also, by the way, I too am controlling my worst instinct. My worst instinct being that um, you should only be allowed to say, uh, tell yourself you're only allowed to tell her that how you feel if you try really hard and do think you've done well enough in your exams because otherwise you don't deserve love which is how no, I no. I, how I would have approached it as a child yeah. so um you know like we're all doing our best to limit ourselves but I am right 
And it went in doubt, <laughs> copy off Anne-Marie by Waterford next to you. It's what I did. No! <laughs> no. no! Shout out to Anne-Marie, you're a fucking babe. <laughs> you, you can cheat. It's like um, driving tests. You really can get kicked down and not let to take them again. In fact, it affects your driving test. If you're found to... I don't even get caught. If you're found, really? In Ireland, certainly. If you're found to cheat on state exams, then you... It, prohibits you from taking your driving test for 10 years. so much. Wow. wow. Just stop it. Just focus. D- deal with it after. And can you email us and let us know how your A-levels go? I'm genuinely curious. Yeah, can you email us and let us know how the whole thing goes? Who, who, What advice you took? Did it blow up in your face? Like, in, I mean, just if you guys can fill me in on this, I'll be listening over the I next know, right? few weeks. Like, I need I to mean, know what I will, happened. I will. Please let us know. I'm like genuinely fascinated. If you tell her and she has halitosis, you're going to regret this. Halitosis. I'm just saying things can happen that you don't expect, so just fucking focus on your exams for now. You know if she had halitosis. I'm going to say... Right you're really grasping at straws for the bad breath argument. <laughs> Is that... Whatever your results are, Abigail and I will be really happy for you. Catherine will be expecting at least one A. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be expecting you to look back and say I did everything I could within the time that I had to try my best and represent myself best moving forward in my life. <sighs> Listen. Wow. You're going to be an Instagram girl boss about this. <laughs> I wish I was an Instagram girl boss. <laughs> I'm just like it'll wait. She's she's not go, moving to a different country like yeah. on the third or the last day. I Jeez. genuinely believe it's more important you get fingered by this girl than it is <laughs> you get a good mark. I genuinely believe that. Oh my god. <laughs> and and then if she says I what if she says no absolutely not and why would you say this to me before exams? You know we have exams. You've made me feel like shit. I then feel you've guilty. Got a tragedy and a reason and to you've ask for re- extra time. Nice. That's <laughs> not a reason to ask for extra time. I don't really know how the system works. <laughs> <laughs> if you got extra time for homophobia, I'd have gotten extra time. You don't. You had homophobic people in the school. I went to an old girls Catholic school in the nineties. Oh no! What's okay. your question? I'm gonna be honest. I didn't uh, picture homophobia there. I just pictured a lot of like gayness there. No, no, that's not how no, it works. No, oh, no. I'm so disappointed. Yeah, well, I've talked to like my guy friends who went to all boys schools, and a lot of gay stuff was going on. Oh, yeah. sure, but yeah. also a lot of uh, you know, yeah, you know, it, it's it, all it, been dour. It's actually been quite a dark pod. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, to our amazing guys, Abigailia. Please promote everything you've right. ever done. Yeah. <laughs> everything yes. where can people watch you at edinburgh fringe uh, oh yes i'll be at the edinburgh fringe uh at 6 20 at the tron uh first ever all female venue this is so lineup. cool this is so cool all so wait women. so every comic who's on there is a woman yes, yes. and yes. that's so fucking cool yeah but you're on at 620. So I'm the, on at 620. Yeah. So that's like the best one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but women not competing tearing, with women yeah. at the Tron. We yeah. love to see it. Yeah. But not tearing anyone down. But I'm the best one. Do you wrestle? Uh, no. No, I will. If I have <laughs> okay, good. I have the no Tron problem. is a great fucking room. It's so very good. Very excited. It's right about beside it. my room at Monkey Barrel. You can just walk up the hill to the Tron after my show to yeah. watch Abigail. Oh, yeah. Come on. We're planning. We're planning. Yeah, but they'll stay for two days. What are they? Everyone's going to be a float. Who takes this 24 hour trip to Edinburgh? Jesus. I also have a a podcast called Neurodivergence Moment yes. Podcast that I do with my friend Joe Wells. Mm-hmm. Uh, please listen to it. We talk to people with different neurodivergencies. I have ADHD. Joe Wells is autistic. And the thing I wanted to fangirl real quick about uh, through Joe is uh, when we started our podcast, Yeah. Uh, every time we talked about like how are we going to do the Patreon, what are we going to do? He'd be like, well, what trusty hog does. <gasps> oh! and, and Andrew, I will know that he is our contact. We try to get Andrew yeah. as our editor. He's busy. <laughs> That's editing so something cute. out. So it's always like, well, Andrew says, well, what Trusty Hogs does. Oh, oh that's really sweet. Yeah, he's the that's one really who got me into your guys' wait, 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 podcast. And how's it working out for you? Great. Good. Oh. Thank you. Great. <laughs> last week, last week, number one comedy podcast in Estonia. Yes. What? Come on, Talon. Come on, Talon. Yeah. fucking love yes. you. Oh my God, they love us. That's so funny. And, uh, I have some questions to ask you about okay. about uh, the terminology around neurodivergence. Okay. Just after this. It would way be better if you asked Joe. Because I will I, ask Joe. I, 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 I'm the you in my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I think you do well in the Midwest. <laughs> You don't know whether to... one? Exactly. Like... Exactly. Okay. <laughs> I feel like everyone got a 
a joke that I didn't just say. You don't know if you've been insulted or complimented right now. It's because you both have great tits. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Uh, I'm also real quick. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, yeah. and Twitter at Abigailia. Now, Abigailia, yeah. how, how are they spelling too. your name? A B I G O L I A H. We love yeah. to hear it. And I guess I'll see you at Fierce Grace. Yeah. But don't sit beside me because I honestly, I don't. I'm I, front row girl. Front row are to you? the left of the teacher. That's my spot. Oh my God. No, I'm back at the right. Yeah. We'll Great. never see each other. No, I'll be outside like, with Powerades. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> No, you should come. Yeah. No, I do want to come. Please come. I want to come. You can help me beat up that old lady with the dancing. Because I wanted to get into water aerobics, but they don't do it in my local pool. Oh, what? No. I rang them up. They don't do it at all. It's just not like an option. Okay. Allison Spittle does water aerobics, and I think you yeah, guys live not so far. Right oh, she lives north. in okay. north. Oh, Stop giving out other north. people's addresses. North, north is fine. North, north is, yeah. Come yeah. On. You, you know in Hollywood, there's like maps of like the, uh, ho- like, uh, the stars' homes. We yeah. could do yeah. a Trusty Hogs guests map. <laughs> you can go around <laughs> London and go to everyone's house. Andrew, That's why? fine because... I do that. I know You know what? <laughs> I, much like the celebrities, live behind a gate with the code. <laughs> nice. so, no, gorgeous. you don't. Andrew, why are you encouraging this insane behavior? We'll only tell it to executive producers. Andrew's like, are you listening are you insane how about you make a map of where we all live it Stop that. i'm so pointless after every five months because someone gets kicked out by their landlord though. yeah so yeah, true yeah. actually no well thank you so much <laughs> yeah. thanks we didn't get to your neuro- i think of like what to say but i just realized we I'm didn't like... get to your neurodivergency question yeah, oh, no, no, no. i will ask them later, later. it's about okay. some terminal it's, this is very boring it's yeah. about my show and some terminology because i definitely got some older language I used to do mm-hmm. with autism. Mm-hmm. So I need to brush uh, it up. In our first episode, if I may plug, in our yeah. first episode, we do talk about uh, terminology around neurodivergence. Fucking wait, I'll just listen to that. Great, thank you so hey, much. You don't even have to talk to Abigail. Dreamy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't, I'm sorry. No, I'm, no, I'm no worried. I'll still double check. We, we're I'm definitely a bit behind on that. We have a great skill of building up to a great crescendo and then destroying totally it before it. we can yeah. actually get out of the podcast. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> 